Hi, David from Electric Teaching here. I'd like to do part two of this graphing absolute value function trick. And we're doing them quickly here. We're not doing the two-line method again, but it's good to do the two-line method to truly understand the little slope adjustments that you need to do. Um, here we have a, I'm using function notation. Don't forget, it's still the same as y equal. I like to mix it up and make sure we go back and forth in advanced algebra between function notation and y equal. But that just means that this axis is kicking out the output of whatever the input x is, and we notate it by f of x. Still an x, y though, x, y grid. So let's see if we can graph some of the shifting of this very quickly. If you saw part one, I'm going to be doing those actions uh, as fast as I can. So forgive, uh, forgive me if I'm not teaching you along the way here what I'm talking about. What makes zero? What makes zero right here? That's going to give us a right shift, a oh, excuse me, a, a horizontal shift. But it's not going to be a right shift because what makes zero is negative three, negative three. So this is uh, what makes zero of negative three means a left shift. So I'm going to pick up the vertex. I'm going to move it left three, left three. This part over here says we are going down two, down two. So down two here. So we're going to pick up the vertex and we're going to move the graph around. Think of it as just something floating on top. We're going to take the mammograph. Don't forget the mammograph usually goes right through zero. And on a one-to-one -one slope, this one's now going upside down. See this negative right here? That negative means every single output that was positive, and in a sense, and in a sense, going up and towards the positive directions, when you think of the V graph, it was going up. But now all those positive answers, they're now opposite they're now negative. So what was up there is now down there. So if you come over here to this graph, what was right up there is now going to be coming to a negative position. What is opposite of positive 2 in the output of positive 2 in the y is now going to be negative. And so you're going to see we're going to get a negative flip instead of the main part of the function wanting to go to positive infinity we're now going to negative infinity and if you saw the two line method video i made it another time that'll hopefully make some more sense let me see if i can just back up here a little bit and get us back to where we were so i, mean, I think if i erase this i'm going to lose part of the graph here so i want to be careful sorry about that all right so now let's take this graph let's flip it let's move it left three and down two left three and down two. Let's see if we can do that now. So if I take this graph, I'm going to go from the zero, zero origin it wanted to be at. I'm going to go left three, one, two, three, and down two. Here's the new vertex. We're still on a one to one slope. There is no number that would multiply to change our slope steepness. So we're still at a one to one slope, but it's a negative slope. So we are going down through those one to one slope movements, down and over, one to one left and down. And the other way, we're going down over here. Now as we read this graph, the way we would read it is we still have a slope of positive one coming in, up one, over one, as I tell my students. And we still have a slope of down one, over one, coming out of it. We always want to read the graph left to right. So we're coming up the hill, okay? And then we're coming down the hill. And that's how you want to read the slopes. Let's try it on a more difficult problem here, a slightly more difficult problem here. Let's try this on a negative 2 times absolute value of 1 plus x and plus 3. Again, I flip-flop the equation here to really mix up the idea of, or use the idea of what makes 0 and to kind of mix up the questions that you see often. So let's first get the shift. The shift says, what makes 0? What is the horizontal movement? That is a negative 1. That is a left 1 last action we would technically do in any calculation would move the every single point up three. Think of it visually, not just calculation wise. So it would take every calculation here and move it up three. Okay. Now with this g of x, don't worry about that's g of x, just means this over here is the y axis is now g of x. It's the output of a g function and this is what our g function is doing. We're going to pick up the vertex, we're going to move it left one, up three, Notice the slope. It's not only a flipped graph, 
but it's got a two steepness on it. It's got a two steepness on it. So I'm going to go left one, up one, two, three, left one, up one, two, three. And now with that negative two, you got to think of it as a negative two would have been multiplied and distributed in the linear method to give us our slope. Okay, and it would have been multiplied and distributed. Okay, across the negative option if you were to use the two-line method. That's why it's important to understand the two-line method before using this quick method. All right, and then you get a really good idea of why we're going to go on a positive two slope coming into this flipped upside down V and a negative two slope coming out, negative two slope coming out. Okay. Let me show you a couple quick graphs on my personal graphing calculator here. This is the graph of the absolute value of um, uh, x minus 1. You can see it down here. x minus 5, excuse me, and then minus 4. Let's do a quick new graph here. If I do a new graph here, let's do um, the one we just did. And the one we just did was, quickly take a look at it, negative 2 absolute value 1 minus x. So negative 2 times the absolute value of 1, I think that was plus x, excuse me, and then we're going to go plus 3 and we'll see what that graph looks like. And now you can see what I was trying to draw quickly. It didn't really come out as pretty as a graphing utility will work, and that's what I wanted to show you. A quick way of how to graph these absolute value functions. You can see it probably should have been a little bit steeper coming out of here. I, ha I didn't hit that point really well. That was my mistake. Sorry about that. Again, using the digital pads a little bit trickier, so sorry about the sloppiness. I'm David from Electric Teaching, and I hope that I have helped.